Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for having me here this morning. Um, so about 10 years ago now, uh, we started the Hadoop Project. Uh, it was uh, initially a pretty uh, small thing. It just had a distributed file system, HGFS, and a distributed execution engine, MapReduce. Um, uh, but it very quickly began to grow uh, and into an ecosystem. Um, uh, you know, with initially uh, Pig from Yahoo, uh, then we saw Hive from Facebook, uh, and so on. And so by the time that uh, Cloudera was founded, uh, two years later in uh, 2008, um, uh, as the first vendor to try to help uh, enterprises outside of uh, Silicon Valley use this stuff, uh, there was already um, a, a range of projects um, uh, that, were, that were available. And so Cloudera was never really a pure play Hadoop company, but always an, an ecosystem company. Uh, and, uh, and so we, we've seen that ecosystem continue to grow um, uh, with, with things like HBase. Um, uh, and, and the job uh, that, that we've seen it is to try to fill the gaps that are needed uh, to make these tools truly useful um, uh, so they can, they can fill this potential of, of providing people a, a better platform uh, for, for computing. Um, uh, computing uh, data, you know, that's, that's more affordable, uh, that's more flexible, uh, that supports a, a more interactive, um, exploratory style, um, that mixes um, uh, more tools, more kinds of computation together. Uh, and, and we're really seeing this blossom. Uh, in, uh, you know, f four or five years ago, uh, we started to hear about Spark. Uh, and uh, Spark uh, has, has matured a lot, and, and a couple of years ago, about three years ago, um, uh, we recognized that it, it really deserved a, a place here in the, in, the, in the core of this ecosystem, uh, and we started investing heavily in it and uh, in trying to um, make it fit in uh, with the rest of the ecosystem uh, so that people can easily uh, build tools that, that, uh, that move between these tools um, uh, and, uh, and, and set about trying to, to fix some, some gaps in in security and in management and so on. Um, Spark was very attractive because it provided and continues to provide a, a much better engine uh, in many ways than, than MapReduce uh, for, for computing. Uh, it's, uh, you know, as you know, um, uh, an easier API. Um, MapReduce is a, a kind, of a, kind of a little clunky to program directly, uh, whereas Spark has a lot uh, richer and higher level um, uh, operators. Um, uh, Spark also performs a lot better. Uh, it uh, lets you keep data sets in memory when you're doing things iteratively, which uh, makes, a, makes a phenomenal difference. Uh, orders of magnitude um, uh, faster for a lot of use cases. Uh, also includes more programming models. It includes a, a streaming uh, mode, uh, which is incredibly valuable. Uh, so all around, you know, uh, deserves to be in there um, uh, and uh, has, uh, has now been embraced. Um, I think as, as we're beginning to see it's really uh, now included uh, in this ecosystem um, and, and made, made some pretty serious inroads, um, uh, now able to power um, uh, Pig uh, and Hive, in integrated with Solar. Uh, there's still things which are clearly always going to be uh, outside the scope of Spark. Uh, we don't see uh, interactive search ever being fully done uh, you know, in, in, uh, in Spark. That's always going to be in the, probably better served by tools like Solar and, and Elasticsearch. Uh, we think interactive SQL uh, is, is, is likely something that's worthy of optimizing independently, uh, and Impala does a, does a very good job at that. Um, there's other things, HBase, um, you know, uh, online key value stores, um, is it, not, a, not a sweet spot um, uh, for Spark, yet all of these things are required in many cases to build the applications uh, that folks need. Uh, and after all, that's our, our core mission. Uh, and as open source projects, we can freely uh, incorporate these um, uh, and mix and match. And, and, and rather than focusing on owning and identifying ourselves with particular technologies, um, uh, focus on trying to pick the set of technologies that best solves folks' problems uh, and make sure they work together. Um, uh, Clutter, we really focused for the last three years uh, since we've included Spark uh, in, our, in our products um, on, on improving uh, management. Um, and none of these things we've done alone. These are all uh, things we've, we've collaborated extensively. In some cases, we've done uh, a minority of the work. 
Um, uh, we were trying to get the, the easier to manage by simplifying configuration, um, uh, uh, make it more secure. We just, we just heard about um, uh, how that's um, uh, paying off for Databricks. Um, uh, but we're also uh, uh, very interested in this, making sure that uh, things are encrypted on the wire, uh, that temporary files are encrypted uh, so that you can really have a, a fully encrypted data path, um, uh, trying to Im improve the scalability so that it can handle really big long-running jobs um, uh, better, um, uh, improving the, the API for, um, uh, for streaming, um, uh, adding the, the map with state operator. Uh, and so on. Uh, it's a continuing process. Um, looking forward, um, uh, we're excited to work on uh, making uh, Spark play better in the cloud, um, uh, working, working uh, well with transient clusters, um, uh, elasticity, adding and removing nodes uh, on the fly. These are, these are the real strengths of, of cloud environments. Um, and we need to make sure that all of our tools uh, can take advantage of them, um, uh, in, including things like spot instances. Uh, so, uh, very, very exciting to see this platform now, uh, th this ecosystem incorporating uh, Spark. Um, it's it's, on its, well on its way towards replacing MapReduce, um, uh, as, it, as it ought to, um, I think, in, in most cases. Um, uh, and more exciting is, is just seeing all the, the amazing things people are doing with this. Uh, you know, we, we work with a, um, a Broad Institute um, <clears throat> who has a, um, a toolkit uh, for doing uh, uh, genomic analysis, uh, and uh, they've, they've had that for many years. It's, it's probably the most popular open source uh, toolkit for, for analyzing genomes. Um, they've, we've recently worked with them to port this uh, to live on top of Spark, um, and we're seeing orders of magnitude performance increases. Uh, so it's, uh, and it's transparent uh, to the users mostly, um, uh, and, and it's been, been a real success there. Uh, if in, in physics, uh, CERN is starting to, to store a lot of its data in, in Hadoop clusters, um, and uh, they've, they've got lots of data, believe me. Uh, and, uh, and now they're using um, Spark ML uh, to um, uh, predict uh, which data sets um, uh, are going to be most popular. And they're, they're probably going to do more tasks going forward. Um, uh, they're, they're at the early stages of, of uh, taking advantage of these, these tools. Um, uh, a lot of exciting uh, cases in healthcare. Um, uh, we've worked with the Children's Hospital of Atlanta um, uh, in their neonatal ICU. We've got these um, uh, premature babies. Uh, they're getting lots of readings from them. Uh, and they're able to now uh, use these to understand um, which treatments are distressing to the babies and which are not um, in order to provide uh, treatments that uh, help the babies heal faster. Um, uh, very, very straightforward, but they were unable to do this until they could really record all the data and monitor it. Um, uh, I've also been working with uh, Cerner on uh, decreasing sepsis uh, and, uh, within, within hospitals uh, and uh, measurably saving lives um, uh, with, with this technology. So it's uh, pretty amazing uh, things that are happening um, when folks uh, have access to this integrated ecosystem. Um, uh, so it it's, keeps happening. You know, that we're, we're continuing to see innovation um, uh, just this week. Um, we announced a new project, Livy, um, uh, providing uh, REST access to Spark. Um, encourage you to, to stop by the booth and, uh, and check it out. Um, uh, and it's not going to stop. Um, th this, that's the wonderful thing about this ecosystem. Uh, and, and I think that's going to be the lasting legacy more than any single technology, uh, is that we, uh, we reinvent ourselves continuously. Um, uh, through this, this open source uh, ecosystem process. Um, uh, new technologies are arriving all the time. There's no center to the ecosystem. Nobody controls it, nobody gates it, um, except the users who get to um, choose what works well for them. And when enough of them do, vendors support those, those options um, and, and they become uh, the next standards. Uh, so it's a, it's a wonderful time uh, to be working on, on data. Uh, thanks again for having me here. And I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day.